for that, you know, in His infinite mercy that, you know, we can do all the wrong, but in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name, that is our weapon, Brother Gillis. Yes, our weapon. It seems so crazy to people out in the world. It may sound crazy to you if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you've never had an experience, amen, but I'm here to tell you that you can experience tonight, amen, just what the power, uh, just the power that's in uh, the name of Jesus, amen. I know that whenever we just said it earlier, I could feel it like reverberate, just like that. Just every time you said it, in the name of when you say Jesus, it's like, ooh, Jesus, ooh, Jesus, both times. It was like a wave. And that's the way that it is in our life, that Jesus has not forsaken us, that Jesus has not brought us this far uh, to just leave us alone, amen, and allow us uh, to come uh, to succumb to the tricks and the wiles of the devil. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand how tricky the devil is. Anybody in here know how tricky the devil is? How tricky is he? Very tricky. He's tricky enough that he convinced one-third One out of every three angels to leave heaven. Heaven. How tricky is he? We can't even wrap our fingers around how deceptive that the devil can be in our life. But as he is so deceptive, God has given us a way, amen, to defeat him so easily and so simply that it blows the minds of scientists, that it blows the minds of every theologian that, that has ever been uh, because they simply can't uh, think about the name of Jesus. Well, how can it be so simple? There has to be more to it than that. It's the same as salvation. All you have to do is ask and you shall receive. Amen. Call upon the name. He said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, that is so complicated for people to understand. Uh, but if you just simply call upon His name, you can be saved. Simply be saved just by calling on His name. Philippians 2, 9-11 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted Him and given Him a name which is above every name. Highly exalted Him and given Him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow every knee should bow. All these friends, all these people that think they're above the law, that they're cool, that they got it going on, that they do their own thing, one day they're going to humble themselves. And they're going to bow. The hell's angels one day, they're going to bow. All these metal bands that you think are so cool and all that, singing this devil hate music, guess what? They're going to bow. Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. Whether they want to or not, they're going to bow before God. They're going to bow before the one that saved. Because no matter what you think, no matter what you've done, no matter if you think the devil's lied to you and said, oh, you've gone too far. Listen, Jesus came to save each and every individual. God said it's His will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All should come to repentance. He shed His blood, so that tells me that there's been a price paid for each individual, each soul, that is alive on the face of the earth, each soul, there was a price paid. Whether they accept it or not, they will still bow before God one day. Donald Trump, he'll bow before God. Hillary Clinton, she'll bow before God. Vladimir Putin, he'll bow before God one day. All these people that think they're above everything else or that they've got it going on, one day the Word tells me that they will bow before God. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow 
of things in heaven and things in earth. Wait a minute. And things under the earth. At the name of Jesus, the devil himself will bow. So how much power does he got? <laughs> Amen. Jesus has all power. But even the devil himself and the one third of the angels he convinced to leave heaven with him, they will all bow at the name of Jesus. I thought when Brother Marcus told me that that night that that was simply just a word. Well, that's not going to revelate to nothing. I need a stick, or I need a, a, a bat, or I need, I need a crowbar, or I need something big. Turn a circle. And in the name of Jesus. I didn't realize something that night, but whenever I made that circle, what I signify? The covenant. Never ending. His covenant's never ending, Billy. It won't, it won't be gone tomorrow. It won't be here today and gone tomorrow. His covenant's forever. When I made that circle, His covenant with me forever. And when I spoke His name, His name's above every name. At the name of Jesus, even the devils of hell will bow before Him. That's why whenever he, I said in the name of Jesus, it's like a vacuum cleaner. He sucked Him clean out the back door. Gone. Never to be never to be seen again. I never had to I never had to deal with that devil anymore. Sure, after that there's another there's different devils that show up, but hey, we've been given the, the power. Simply in the name of Jesus. When things ain't going right at school, when, when things are, are tough at home and and things just seem to be going just really bad. And I know that some of it we, we don't have a clue, like Jamie said, sometimes of what the young people go through. but I'm teaching you the most powerful thing that I know to teach you. The power that you've been given in the name of Jesus. And you can use that name because you are a child of the King. And you've been given the authority in heaven to use that name. So Matt, when it seems like everything's coming against you, son, simply just say, in the name of Jesus. You don't have to do some big rain dance. Just simply say, in the name of Jesus. And I can promise you that every devil, every devil that's trying to come against you will be gone in that instant because he cannot stand in the presence of the... He ain't off the bow in the name of Jesus. He'll have to leave you alone. He'll have to get behind you. When you see that pretty girl, Brother Gillis taught me one time, when you see that pretty girl who wants to bat her eyelashes at you, woohoo! Or that cute little boy that wants to strut around with his shirt cut off and <laughs> long flowing hair how <laughs> flopping in the wind looking like Fabio. Y'all probably don't know who that is, but I do. You say, in the name of Jesus, get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. I ain't got time for you. And you don't have to worry about fighting that devil with them bad thoughts that trying to corrupt your mind, trying to uh, ruin your mojo with God, trying to drive that wedge between you and Him in your relationship with God. Speak to Him. Speak to the devil. Tell him, devil, get behind me. Out loud. In the name of Jesus, leave me alone, devil. I don't have time for you. There's no room in, your, in my life for you. I'm a child of the King. I belong to God. He said that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I see a lot of people that try to disprove what the Bible says. There's a lot of scientists out there that... Uh, I, have, I have a buddy that... Uh, he's, a, he's real big into, into creation. He, 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 is a, 
He loves creation. And it, it's funny to talk to him because it just drives him crazy when you have these scientists that try to explain it away that there was a big bang and all of a sudden you were just created out of nothing, out of a, a particulates that were floating around in midair and that just... Whew. And what well, they try to teach our kids in school, the same exact thing, evolution. Evolution, remember, kids, is a theory. It's not proven fact. He meant, if we're still evolving, why don't I have a tail? Come on, that's right, that's right. You got a, a few of them. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I, I know I have a lot of people that probably look at me. Well, it, look, you're just a little, you know, you're just a little bit overboard for me. Or maybe you know you you think, and, and sometimes maybe I, I criticize myself, and maybe I put too much thought into some things. Sometimes I, I don't know, but I just know that what God speaks to me, and I'm not going to limit God. I'm going to let God out of the box. I don't, I don't, uh, brother Dale. I don't try to keep God within the pages of this book. Amen. I, I don't try to contain God just within uh, the small realm of my friends or my family, I, I, I tend to want to let God be God. <laughs> and that's what everybody, everybody asks me, well, I, where do you go to church at New Beginnings Worship? What do you believe? I believe God. <laughs> I seen the other day the New Living Translation has removed, uh, there's a couple of important scriptures that if you read it, the King James Version has them in there, it's in Matthew, uh, but they have removed those scriptures out of there. The Catholic Church has removed the Scripture where uh, it talks about baptism in a body of water because they still believe in sprinkling babies. I choose to believe God. I believe the Bible from the front all the way to the back. All, even the maps are true in my opinion. I choose to believe God, church. I, I don't choose to believe anything else. If God said I can have it, I can have it. If God said I can do it, I can do it. And I'm pretty sure he told, us, he told the disciples, he said, great things have you seen me do? He said, but even greater will you see me do after I've ascended to the Father. I seen a 93-year-old woman last night. Hey Amen. A tent revival. Mom witnessed it. She hadn't been able to walk or nothing. And, and quite some time, she's 93 years old, she had a walker. Then brought her in there. And I even heard Sister Carol one night on the video uh, say that, well, Mama can't stand up. I want to tell you, last night, Brother Darrell, I seen that 93-year-old woman go out on Facebook and on YouTube with her walker about where Brother Bill's at right now. And she was about right here, and she was dancing in the Holy Ghost. She'd been filled with the Holy Ghost, 93 years old. The power of God, we limit God so much in our life. Young people, don't limit God. Don't say, well, God, I, I, I'm just, well, I guess, God, you'll do it for somebody else. I don't think you'll ever do it for me. Don't limit God in your life. Allow God to be God. Allow God. I don't know why God does things for me. I just let God be God. I, I choose to let Him be God. I don't know why that things happen for me and they don't for other people, but I just allow God to be God. I don't know why God has blessed me with a, with a, with a family and with a wife and with children and with a job. And I, I don't know why, but I just let God be God. Amen, Brother, Brother Gillis. I, I, don't, I don't question why. Or what I've done, I know I'm not good enough. I know I can't outgive God. I know I can't outwork God. I know I can't outdo God. And I can never repay Him. All I can do is just let God be God. Amen. We, we just let God be God. That, that's the problem. Everybody wants to have control. Everybody wants to, uh, to have it on uh, 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 an opinion. Everybody wants to have uh, what they think should happen, happen. Uh, but let's just let God be God. Amen, yes. Amen. in our homes. In our workplaces, at the grocery store, wherever we may be, let's let God be God. We'll leave the results up to Him. We'll let God be God. We make ourselves, uh, because if we don't, we're going to tie God's hands. We don't want to tie God's hands in our lives. I don't, I don't want God's hands tied in my life, Brother Harold. I want, I want God to, I, I want everything He's got to offer. Amen. At one time, I wanted everything the devil had to offer. Right? 
So I've been saved by Jesus. Why? Uh, by His blood. Why? Why would I not want to receive?